Here we go. We're going to open up in prayer and worship the Lord uh, with a couple of songs. And then Robert's going to bring us an inspirational message. And we'll get right back to prayer. And prayer is so important. Prayer is so critical. You know that? I mean, that's why we do this. That's why we gather on Wednesday nights is because prayer is such a difficult thing a lot of the time, but it's so important. Have you noticed that everything that's really fruitful and meaningful is difficult? No? That's a good sermon maybe for Sunday. I don't have a sermon. Whatever is really impactful and fruitful and really uh, changes things for the good is always very difficult. It's just how it is. But we do it because the Lord enables us to do it. So tonight we're going to pray and we're going to ask the Lord to enable us to pray in faith and pray according to his will. Father, we love you so much in Jesus' name. And Lord, you have called us to this time and place. And Lord, you have enabled us and equipped us to be fruitful in these days. And so, Lord, we pray that you would lead us tonight in our prayer service, that you would pray through us, pray in us, and pray through us, Lord, that we can be fruitful in this time. And we thank you that we can do all these things in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
So 
how much God loves our praises and waits for our praises to touch his ears. Oh, hallelujah. Moms, you love to hear your children say mama for the first time. You love to hear them say I love you, daddy. Our heavenly father longs for the church of Jesus Christ to just worship and praise him. Hallelujah. Give him a time to praise him. Hallelujah. Can you just sing that last part one more time? Just worship him, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read two scriptures and then go to prayer and then, uh, hallelujah, see what the Lord will have for us tonight. In Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1 through verse 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 16, verses 20. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Father, I come. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask, Father God, that you would touch and anoint our hearts and our minds tonight. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, Lord, let me and help me to do what you have given me to do. In Christ's name, amen. I want to shift gears real quick and do something. I have not lost my mind. I want to ask you, who's Garth Brooks? I don't listen to country music. I'm a southern gospel type person. But who's Garth Brooks? Well, it says he's the only artist released that in history that's released nine albums that have achieved diamond status. He surpassed the Beatles, who had six. He's released 23 records, 
in all. He's won two Grammys. He's won 17 American Music Awards. He was awarded Artist of the 90s, and this is just a few of his accomplishments. Well, here's what got me excited. On May the 4th, and the Lord began to give this to me, you know, preachers were all the time trying to find a confirmation. If God gives you something, you know, you're reading it and you're going, well, what do they think? But you want a confirmation that it was something from God. Well, I read this the very next day on May the 5th. On April the 30th, 2022, at 9.31 p.m. at LSU Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, in Louisiana, while Garth Brooks was beginning to sing one of his greatest hits called Calling Baton Rouge, in the Nicholas Building on the LSU campus reported and recorded a small earthquake. There were 102,000 fans packed into the stadium. The decibel levels were at 95. If somebody's in the noise level of that for 10 minutes, it will cause short, uh, temporary hearing loss. Now, here's what got me excited. Pastor, if the world can go to a stadium and worship an artist and music. They had one mind and one accord going on in the stadium. They all wanted to be there. They all weren't complaining about the fiddle player. They weren't complaining about anybody up on the stage. They had their eyes focused on why they came. 102,000 people shook a stadium and made a moment in history that they said the last time it happened at LSU Stadium was 33 years ago. Now here's the thing. We're the children of God, the body of Christ. We're Pentecostals. Hmm, help me God. I know somebody, I know a place right now that tells them that if you want to pray, they're a non-denominational church. If somebody's spiritual in the congregation, you can take the Holy Ghost off to the corner into a back room and you can pray for them if that's what they want. Excuse me, who is man to try to take God, put Him in the corner? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost was here way before man ever existed. How dare a man to try to say, God, you can't be in here, but you can be over there. There's one thing I know, God doesn't bless a mess. everybody out here wants to find somebody but just like I even I tell my nephews and things oh you can find somebody and you can find anybody but you might not find the right body and you'll find out soon <laughs> hallelujah it won't take long for you to find out amen and us being Pentecostal people means this that I am saved and bought by the blood of Jesus Christ washed in it I'm sanctified and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Here's what that means. Jesus went to the Father and said, I'm going to ask Him to send you another comforter. In other words, that gift that Jesus requested to the Father, He sent to the church. Hallelujah. And why did He send it to the church? It was a gift that would empower the body of Christ that we would not be intimidated in the world. People are being intimidated in the world. Listen. If you want the Holy Ghost for goosebumps, that's what you're going to have. But God gave the Holy Ghost to a timid person who was a person that denied Jesus three times, rose him up on the Holy Ghost, and let him preach one of the most outstanding messages. And he was the least that probably should have done it. Why, if the church board would have came together and said, Nah, Peter's not qualified. You know, Peter, he's, he's had his problems with being a lying, cussing, swearing fisherman, and he's just not qualified. Let, let me find somebody else. Hallelujah. I've often said in times past that if the church world would have saw John the Baptist come in at the back door of the church, they'd go, oh, no, I don't think so. I don't think you're going to be the evangelist speaking of the evening. I just don't think you're qualified. Well, my cousin said that there was none born better by a woman than me. I don't care what your cousin said. Oh, who is he? He's Jesus. 
Oh, that carpenter's son. Even Jesus had to deal with people belittling him, putting him down at lower states. But that didn't stop him because here's the one thing he knew. He was on an assignment not for anybody else but his father. Amen. And so when we think about the day of Pentecost, the church of Jesus Christ needs to let the Holy Spirit be unleashed in them, and there's only one way to do it. We've got to stop controlling the knob. We turn it on when we want to. We turn it off when we want to. If we don't like something, listen. Here, Help me, Holy Ghost. I, you don't see 102,000 fans walking out of LSU Tiger Stadium because Garth Brooks didn't sing their favorite song from the word go. No, you saw them waiting. You saw them anticipating. Oh, God, I'm going to get in trouble. What kind of offering did they give for those tickets? I wouldn't even want to know. Help me, God. But while I told you some of God's greatest hits, or Garth Brooks' greatest hits, let me tell you God's greatest hits. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. One of his other greatest hits was, and God said, let there be light. My God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. One story, brother, Pastor Dave, is this that I love. I'll never forget it when Ray Hughes preached it. I had to get in the Bible myself and find out, was it true? Well, yeah, it was. First Kings chapter 6, verse 6. There was a man that was so upset because he lost something he borrowed from his neighbor. He lost an axe head. It fell off the handle. Well, Moses had took a, they had took a handle and they stuck it in the water. And it said the axe head swim to the handle. And he retrieved what he had lost. How many of you have lost something that you feel that's not retrievable? But yet God knows how to retrieve it. God knows how to help you find it. Hallelujah. My blessed God. Hallelujah. You see, I'm the type of person that I believe the Word of God. Do I believe that the... I, listen, since I've been 16 years old, Pastor, I have desired and I've waited and I've anticipated and I've waited and waited and prayed and prayed and prayed because I'm believing that the Spirit of God is going to fall upon the body of Christ just like it did on the day of Pentecost. But one of the most important things is, is we've got to make sure that we're not like the 300 180 others that didn't show up. There was room enough in the house for all of them, but only 120 showed up. Only 120 heard the Russian mighty wind. Only 120 experienced clothing tongues like as fire set up on their heads. Only the 120 experienced the Heavenly language coming upon them. Hallelujah. You see, the one thing I learned since I've been in Pentecost is this. I obtain all three ranks of the church of God, but it don't make me better than anybody else. It don't make me smarter than anybody else. I've always been a person, and I pray to God I always feel that way. I'm the least and I'm inadequate. God, why did you call me? Listen to me, my friend. There is something God placed in you, a gift that no one else has. And it's unique. Amen. Don't let somebody try to intimidate you because they seem to do something better than you. That's not what God called you to do. But God called you in your little corner of the war, the world to be what He wanted you to be. Amen. And let it shine. Hallelujah. Glory. Let whatever God gave you, let it shine. Let it reach out to somebody in darkness. Let somebody see the glorious light of the goodness of what God's done in you. Let the world know, hallelujah. Listen, I'm telling you that God can cause an earthquake right here at this house of God. Amen. Well, 
I've been in some churches that I, I think it would have scared them if the house would have shook. They'd have took off running out. But I think that's what we need. Listen, I'm getting ready to close with this. Three things in the news that I've seen that is disturbing. Well, listen to me. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. You've got to let the Holy Ghost have His way. Teach you. Guide you. Form you. Shape you. That's His job. Amen. You've got to get fortified in that you know that you know who Jesus Christ is. Too many Christians sometimes only know Jesus in word, but they haven't really experienced Him like He wants. I was up preaching one night and we'd received a phone call before church and a lady was going to be coming. I said, okay. She came in the back of the church. She could barely walk. Tears was in her eyes. She was in tremendous pain. And the Lord interrupted me in preaching and said, have her come up front and pray for her. And I did. The Holy Ghost, if we let him be in charge, he can do things that will blow your mind. She came up front and I was getting ready to pray for her. And he said, tell Sister Michelle to grab her by the hand and walk her around the church praising God. I went, Lord, she's in so much pain. She's crying. She can't walk. Tell her to walk her around the sanctuary. Mm. She got about halfway toward the back. And the Spirit of God began to start moving on her. She who was in the house of God was beginning to start crying in pain because of the pain in her leg. Began to worship God and began to start taking more steps and more steps and more steps and more steps. And more steps. Began to start praising God. And then, listen church, at the end of the service when it comes to testifying, it is so important when God does something for you that you testify. Don't let the moment pass you by. Edify God by giving Him glory and honor and praise. She said, Pastor, I want to tell you something. I come here tonight for prayer because tomorrow they're cutting my leg off. She said, I want to show you my ticket. I said, no, you don't need to show me. You don't need to show me. She raised her leg up just enough. And she said, you see right there, they had already put the black tick marks all the way around her leg. She said, tomorrow morning when I go in to the doctor, they're going to amputate my leg. I don't want to lose my leg. Well, I've told you that to tell you this. At Sister Debbie here, still today, in 2022, that was all the way back in the year of 2000. She still has her leg, hallelujah. She didn't lose it. It had nothing to do with me or Sister Michelle or anybody else. It had to do with somebody was crying out to God. It had to do with somebody that had pain. It had somebody to do that they wanted God to move and they needed Him. And all God was saying is, do you hear them, church? Do you hear them, church? There's lots of cries. Lots of cries. Three things happening right now really upset me. And this is getting back to knowing what you say you believe. How does people get persuaded? How do two lesbian pastors from two different churches that were marching with the abortionists said that they stand in agreement to abort babies and that they're lesbians. How did a church come to embrace that? Another one is this. In Florida, this coming weekend, an LBTQ, I can't do it. They got so many letters anymore, I don't know. Just A, B, C through Z. They are having a youth concert. Listen to this. A youth concert that will teach kids to identify what gender they are, will help them to find out if they are gay or lesbian, and to beat it all, the grand finale. Do you know what the grand finale is? They're bringing drag queens in 
to dance for them and show them their lifestyle to see if they may appeal and at the same time all under the canopy of the church. Well, you go, well, that's not no church. That's what I say. But what I'm saying is this. How did they come to that? How did they get convinced into that? I've told my wife and I've told other people in the church of God, the day the church of God embraces homosexuality, I say goodbye, I burn my license. The day the church of God embraces abortion, I say goodbye, my license are gone. I will never support it. I will never be in line with it. Amen. And I don't believe they will. But on May the 4th, at 7.30 in the morning, The Holy Spirit, as I was praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit began to direct me to pray for the General Assembly for the next General Overseer that will be appointed by the Church of God in Houston, Texas. Now, Tim Hill is the General Overseer at this time. He is from Texas. He used to be my state overseer in the Ohio. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to impress me and show me in an open vision. Here's what he showed me. He showed me an open oil vase and it tilted in one drop of oil. But before, I, before that, hold on a minute, I got ahead of myself. An illuminating light was shining down on a bunch of arms that were crisscrossed, flesh arms, crisscrossed, no life in them whatsoever. They were just laying there. And as the pitcher of oil released one drop, One drop, that oil transformed into an eagle. My God. And then as it transformed into an eagle, it immediately transformed to for a, the hugest white dove I've ever seen. And that white dove came down, swooped over top of those arms, and those arms came to life and began to be raising up and praising and magnifying God. Here's what I got from that. Hallelujah. I believe God is about to pour out His Spirit like never before upon the church in America. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. As I saw that eagle sway, begin to fly, and then it came into a dove. Here's the thing. If God's promising to give a great awakening, church, Here's the thing he's saying to you. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Keep your oil lamp trimmed and burning. Keep yourself centered and positioned under the fountain of God. Hallelujah. God's got great things in store for this church. He's got great miracles. Hallelujah. That he wants to do. And I believe he's going to do it. And let me just, oh God, I, I, can I just real quick just say this and I'll be done, I promise. Five, six things. We got to be positioned. For the move of God, we got to tarry and wait, not be in a hurry. Hallelujah. We've got to surrender unto God like never before. We have to be hungry for the move of God like never before. And we must decrease in ourselves. And the last thing that's so important. Pastoring for almost 25 years. This is so important. Pastoring is not an easy job for no one. Remember I said God won't bless a mess? You can have all the bells and whistles in church. But if we don't have submission, God won't bless. He won't do it. Pastoring's not easy. 
You guys have a wonderful pastor. Wonderful pastor. Paul and Silas weren't arguing in the prison. I don't want to sing that song, Paul. I don't care. What do you want to sing? Ruby spares an agony on me. Oh, I'm in locks and stocks and bonds and no one's here at all. No, we're not singing that song, Silas. We're going to sing what we know. Great is our God. Hallelujah. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah. My Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, He lives. Hallelujah. I don't care if I'm in stocks and bonds. I don't care how dark it is in the prison. I just want to magnify my God. I'm not going to take in sorrow or pity me. And at midnight, I believe it's midnight church. The stocks and bonds fell off. An earthquake happened. Doors came open wide. Here's the thing. Zero in on this. The prisoners heard them sing. Those that are in darkness are prisoners right now. We are the light of the world, salt of the earth, a lighthouse. Let the prisoners see us, let them hear us, and let us in the name of Jesus lead them out. Hallelujah. Church, would you stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to excuse myself because if I don't, I won't. Pastor Dave, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Amen. Let's do what we do. Let's gather around the front here and go into a time of uh, corporate prayer. Thank you for that, Robert. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you tonight and praise you. Thank you, God Almighty. Yeah, we're just going to gather around the front and, and uh, begin to pray, begin to ask God to do what he wants to do. You know, I, I enjoyed that preaching, and couldn't you just sense that there's so much God wants to do in our country? So much God wants to do in our church and in our country and in the lives of people that we care about, the lives of people that we're concerned about. Lord God Almighty, we just lift you up right now. Father, we just know that you're at work, Lord, in every life. You are at work in every situation. Lord, we thank you that the Holy Spirit always goes before us. God, your Spirit is at work in everyone's life, Lord. In our own lives, Lord, you are at work. Thank you for that, Lord. God, thank you for what you're, you're stirring and what you're building in your church in this country right now. Lord, you are just raising up a people, God. You are raising up faith and victory in this, in the, in this church and in every church, Lord. God, you are ready to just explode, God. You're ready to just allow something to explode in our midst, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to be part of that. We want to surrender to that, Lord. We want to be in that, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now anoint us right now, we pray, Lord. Anoint our hearts right now. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pass this microphone around to everybody that's got a prayer on your heart that you want to pray right now. Anybody at all. Thank you, Lord. Something you want to pray about tonight. Amen. I'm going to hand this to Jeff right now. Father, I just want to say that uh, we all love you and that uh, I just want to thank you for a family life center. I just want to thank you for the people in this church. They're all beautiful, lovely people. I just I love them so much. I don't know how to show them. But they are just awesome people, Father, and they have helped me. And, uh, Lord, just lately I, I'm, I'm getting back on track and I feel good and uh, things are getting better because I keep you in my mind constantly. And I just want to let you know that I just love you. And uh, I just thank you for this church. And in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Someone else tonight, you just want to pray 
lift up a prayer to God that we can agree with. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that message, God. And I just, right now, Lord, I just cry out for you, God. I want your spirit to be real in me, Lord God, in all of us, Lord. I want to stop just reading about your the moves of your spirit, the healings, the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, Lord God. But I want to see them here on earth in my time, Lord. I want to see you move in the young people, Lord God. I want to see just... Thrones of or drones of people just coming into this church, Lord, just hungry for you, Lord, and that we can see their salvation, Lord God. We know that that you're ready, Lord God, and it's us who need to prepare, Lord. So just I humble myself before you right now, Lord God, and I just ask for you to prepare all of our hearts, Lord God, to soften them, to get rid of the hardness that we've built up, Lord, to just that we may seek you more than ever before, Lord God. Oh, Holy Spirit, move in this church, Lord, among every person that's here tonight, Lord God. Oh, Oh, Spirit, come, God. I just want to see the glory cloud come and your spirit fall, Lord. In this church and all the churches around, Lord God, like Robert was talking about, Lord, that we want to just feel that earthquake. We want to be praising you so loud, Lord, that you can't help but to come and to shake things up. Shake up this ground, Lord, and move, God. Would we get out of the way? Would we humble ourselves, Lord? Would we just be so in tune with what you want to do, Lord, that you can come and you can move, Lord? So we just invite you in here, Lord. I invite you into my heart deeper, Lord. Would you just chisel away the imperfections that you see, Lord God, that we may become more like you, Lord God. Help me in my mothering, Lord God, that I may show your love and your wisdom and your grace and your mercy to my children, Lord, that they may know who it is from and that it's from you, Lord. For all the parents, Lord God, would you just be with them and bless them and guide them right now, Lord God. It's such a hard season to be raising children in, Lord, and we just need your wisdom and guidance more now than ever, Lord. So I just ask you for that, Lord. Not just for me, but every mother and father that's in here, Lord God, from from the young little children to even the adult grown children, their parents, Lord. We need you, God. We need you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Someone else, you want to lift up a prayer to God right now? Thank you, God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father Almighty. Robert, pray that God will start baptizing people in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. A gift sent from heaven by the Father to every believer that's washed in the blood of the Lamb. It is a gift, God, that you intended to infill each and every vessel. Not only just infill us, God, but touch and anoint us, give us boldness, anoint our hands, Father God, to do the kingdom work. Father, to lay hands on impossible situations and see them change in the name of Jesus. To do things, God, that, Lord, is, would blow the minds even in the natural, Lord. So, Father, I pray in Christ's name, Lord God, there's cancer people that will be healed. There's people that have blinded eyes, their eyes will open. Lame will walk in the name of Jesus. And in that moment, in that hour, Lord God, if need be, that you want to call somebody and raise them back up out of the dead, then so be it in Jesus' name. But Lord, Father, we come to you as children. Oh, my God. We come to you as children. Father God, the record in the Brownsville revival on Father's Day was the Spirit of the Lord. They had been praying for years and the Spirit of the Lord saturated the sanctuary that morning, overwhelmed the congregation. But the thing that just blew it all away was they heard the children weeping, crying, coming in the sanctuary. And the Spirit of God was so great and so powerful that the pastor was carried off the platform. Everybody else couldn't even contain themselves because the awesome presence. You're no different then than you are now, God. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, blow the doors off this place. Blow the windows out of this place in the name of Jesus. Lord, infill every vessel with the Holy Ghost. 
Lord, as they hunger and desire, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, let them have dreams and visions at night. Let them go forth in prayer, Father, in their prayer closet, and let them like never before, according to your word, see the results come forth that you said you'd bring openly. What we pray in secret, you said it would come openly out. Let the openly out and the suddenly happen in the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, God Almighty. Bless your name. Someone else, someone else, you had a prayer on your heart. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we're just, we want to just continue to call out to God, continue to uh, intercede that he will do things in our midst. And, out, and outside of our midst as well. Lord, we are just praying, God, that you will begin to show yourself powerful and strong. God, you'll begin to show yourself mighty in our lives and through our lives. There are people even in our own church, that they're so frustrated with situations, Lord. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will take those situations. God, that you'll begin to intervene and begin to do things and break down walls, break down barriers, Lord. Bring down strongholds. And, and let the holy, the power of the Spirit begin to do things that we in our own efforts and intellect and emotions cannot deal with, Lord. God, just begin to release that in the lives of people. Break walls down around your people. In Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just have your way, Lord. Have your way, God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just waiting on someone else. You want, want to offer up a prayer tonight? Yes. Oh, Father God. God, it's no, it's so crazy, the coincidence. God, it's just so you that I was just reading this passage this morning, God. Lord, it just was depressed upon my heart about in Acts chapter 2, the idea of the one mind and one accord. It was so so strong as I was reading it over and over and over and over this morning, God. Father, that it says that they, after Jesus ascended into heaven in the cloud, that they positioned themselves. They were obedient and they were in the waiting. It, said that it says that they just waited. They were obedient in the going to the upper room and to go to Jerusalem and just to wait. And Father, I just, it was so crazy the, um, the um, how it was just jumping out at me this morning and I just read it so many times. So, Lord, we position ourselves right now, God, and we wait. Let us not be in a hurry, God. Father, let us we just humbly bow ourselves down before you, God, and we seek your face, and we seek you, God, and we cry out to you as the scriptures say, God. Lord, you will just be here, God, and just blow through this place, God. Lord, there's oh, so many words, so many songs about the, the wind of your spirit, God. And I just invite you, God, we ask you to let it be done as we position ourselves in this church, God. And I just thank you for your word, God. I thank you for tonight, God. I thank you for the hearts of your people. Lord, let us become so desperate for a move of your spirit, God, that we will do anything it takes, God, as a, like a godly repentance, God, before you. We, we repent right now, God, of ourselves, of our sins, of ourselves, of getting in the way of you, God. Lord, Lord, we make room for you tonight, God. And in this church, God, let it be done that we would just always make room for you. In Jesus' name, God, it's all about you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we bless your name, oh God. We thank you. Someone else tonight. We're just in a spirit of intercession. We're just standing between heaven and earth. We are that those intercessors that are between heaven and earth and, and waiting for God to give one more a word, a prayer that they can pray tonight. Amen. One of the things that um, God has just impressed upon my heart for like the last couple of weeks is that in that positioning that, you know, Acts talks about, that positioning is that God's going to be giving us opportunities to have conversations and it's going to be conversations in regards to topics that are difficult, you know, abortion. You know, there are Christians right now that are speaking out loud about abortion and they are pro-choice and they have their reasons for that. And there's just so many other topics that are going to come to our come to God's people 
And for me personally, it's very uncomfortable to have those conversations. So what God was saying to me this week was basically, you know, Stephanie, you need to get comfortable being uncomfortable. I mean, that's what, that's what I need to do. And I think that's really not just for me, but for the church in general, that we want to love people and meet them where they're at. But at the same time, we need to be willing to have those conversations. And so that's what I'll, I would like to pray about tonight, just for, for everyone um, in the church, not just this church, but for, you know, every Christian that is trying to walk with the Lord. Father God, I just thank you so much for, first of all, for this church and just for this opportunity, this prayer time. Um, we praise you and thank you for allowing us to gather and I just ask, Father, that you would give us courage, that you would, um, Paul's prayer where he talks about that you would give us the strength, the power, your power, your heart. We cannot do this on our own, Father. We need your help. We need your help to speak up, to speak in love, Father God, that you would open doors and give us opportunities to have those conversations that are uncomfortable but that we would do it in your love, Father God, that people would not feel condemned, but they would see the love and power of you through us as we have these conversations, Father, that they would want to know more about who you are and why we have such a strong belief in you, Father. And this week um, and next week, I'm going to have plenty of opportunities with relatives coming in town that are going to be asking me questions and there's going to be conversations that are going to be very difficult but I just ask Father for your your courage your spirit to work in and through me Father God and I pray that for every person here that will also have those opportunities because they're coming they're coming people are going to start asking us questions as pastor said um, people are looking for stability people are looking for the light people know that there's something different in us and we need to be positioned, we need to be ready, we need to per be prepared, and we're asking in your holy name, Father God, that you, you would be present, Father God, and that when we have those conversations, that we would walk away and feel your peace, knowing that we did well, and we did what you called us to do as a church. In Jesus' name, we ask all of this in your name, amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for the things that you've done here at this church, Lord God, the, uh, the changes of heart, Lord, from when Pastor first came and Dev and I first came. Lord, I love the unity that is here. But Lord, I pray that you help us to have an increased unity with you. Father, we can't go deep enough in you to, to find the end, to find the bottom. I, hope, I pray that you ask, help all of us, God, to continue to push into you and to just grow in you so much. And Father, out of that growth in you, we're going to find ourselves like spokes of wheel. As, as everything goes towards the center, it all gets closer together as well. Father, I pray for an increase in fellowship, an increase of unity amongst ourselves as we individually pursue after you and out of that unison with you and the closeness with you, Father. That we become more like you, become more selfless, Lord. These ideas of, well, I want to sing or I want to, well, will fade away as we just get pursued. I just want God. I want Christ. I want, Lord, let that be our focus and our cry of Jesus, 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 as we pursue after you. Father, that there be an increase in unity. There be an increase in the move of the gifts of the Spirit, that you have a freedom in us because as we're in you and you are in us, God, there is a unity and there's a oneness. Lord, I pray for that to, to grow more inside of all of us, God, that you put this desire in us to just pursue after you and only you, casting our cares aside and everything else that would distract from that and be in pursuit of you. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, God, and praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We bless you tonight, God. Someone else before we, yes, <laughs> was it? Father, you've just really put it on my heart lately, God, this idea of the, your foundation, God, and building our foundation on you. So, Father, right now, I pray that you just stir our hearts, Lord, to return back to our first love and, and come back to you, Lord, and really build our lives on you, God, not the things that we have or can accumulate, Lord, not the people that we know necessarily, God, or the family that we have even, God. But, Lord, we choose tonight, Lord, 
and for the rest of the time until you return to build our life on you. You are the foundation. You are the cornerstone. We build everything upon you. Father, I believe that what's coming in the next uh, years, months, wherever, God, is going to be a storm-like thing, Lord. So we need to be anchored. We need to be firmly foundation, Lord, in you, Father, in your word, Lord, to know who you are. So, Father, I just pray that you do that in us. Lord, start tonight. Lord, start a new work in us, Lord, that's foundational, that ties us to you in Jesus' name. The last few mornings in my quiet time in the morning, uh, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, I try to pray, and uh, the last few days I start praying, and I end up just say, sitting there saying, thank you, Lord, I love you, Lord. I can't pray other than that. I, what, what is this, Lord? And I finally got the answer today from it. He said, you're praying for what? people have spent millions of dollars for it. You're praying for peace. You're praying for happiness. Uh, the government officials are doing that right now. They're taking money. They'll create their problems. But you can't buy what we have, Lord. You can't. All you got to do is say, I love you, Lord. Forgive me. And you've got it. And Lord, and he'll fill you with that, that joy and that peace. And Lord, I just I just want more. That's all. I'm, I'm greedy. I want more. I want, want more in our church, Lord. And we'll, we'll give you the praise for it. Yes, Lord. Thank you, sweet God. Thank you, Father. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name, Lord. Thank you, God Almighty. Hallelujah, Lord. If there's no one else that wants to pray, we're going to conclude in prayer. But I don't want to cut anybody off if you've got a, something upon your heart. Anybody at all? Thank you, Father. Yes. I just want to say thank you, Father, for the heart that everybody has for this uh, great awakening to come. And that our hearts are all in one accord about wanting more of you, God. And just thank you for victory over darkness and the power of prayer that we have. Our heartfelt, fervent, powerful prayers that we pray, Lord, are effective. And we thank you, Lord, for the power in us, Lord, and the fact that we're learning our identity in Christ and the power of the blood and the name of Jesus and all these things, Lord, and you're teaching us all along the way. We thank you that you haven't given up on us, Lord, and that you love us and you want to work with us to keep, continue to grow and be challenged and just receive deliverance that we need and others need around us. We thank you, for Father, for listening and helping us. Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let's just conclude, but let's do one thing as we conclude. Uh, in the sermon tonight, Robert preached. It says that Paul and Silas uh, sang and prayed at midnight. They sang hymns and prayed to God at midnight, and the prisoners were listening, listening to them. I believe it is midnight. Midnight's a great time. I believe it's midnight on, on God's time clock. I believe we're going to see the greatest outpouring we've ever seen. And I do believe what Trevor said is the greatest storms we've ever seen. So right now, if you would just agree with me, we want to set our hearts that what, what needs to come out of our mouths is praises to God. At midnight, Paul and Silas uh, prayed and sang praises to God. And I want God to help us, so just as a conclusion tonight, help us with what comes out of our mouth at midnight. Because, because midnight is the darkest it gets before it begins to head toward dawn. It's the halfway point from dusk to dawn. And at that, at that point, it's so critical that we, we, we pray and sing praises to God. We can think of ten things that are bothering us, Ten things that are that are difficult in our life, but Father, right now, we just ag agree in this place. We we agree in our hearts, Lord, that that we want to be those who pray and sing praises at midnight. Lord, we know that it's midnight, and we know that there are storms on all the horizon, Lord. 
But we also know, God, that you are up to something so very powerful. You are up to something, God, that is strong and, and that is going, you're going to show yourself through our lives. So, Lord, help us to align our hearts with what you're doing and not to align our hearts with the storm. Lord, help us to align our hearts by praying and singing praises to you at midnight. And Lord, I pray for everyone that is hurting. Lord, Paul and Silas had bloody backs. Their backs were bloodied as they were sitting in that dungeon. I pray for everybody that is hurting, that they will begin to pray and sing praises to you. Lord, I pray that everybody that is in darkness, that is in shackles, those that are in very difficult circumstances will begin to pray and sing praises to you. Lord, that we will turn our hearts to you and you will begin to release the prisoners. God, because when Paul and Silas's shackles fell off, everybody's shackles fell off. Lord, and you want to release the prisoners through our praises and through our prayers. And so, Lord, we ask you to guard our mouth like, like the psalmist David said, Guard my mouth while the wicked is before me. God, guard our mouths that we only pray and sing praises to you at the most difficult season of human history and yet the most glorious season in human history. So, Lord, from this moment, we want to give glory to you. Lord, bless our church. Enable us to, to walk in that. Lord, bless our service this Sunday. Lord, we want you to just increase your presence in our midst. Increase your glory in our midst, Lord. And so we look forward to that and we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I did get a call from uh, Keith uh, Peabody's uh, grandson this afternoon. And Keith is in the Covington Hospital. He is passing. Some of you remember Keith and Veda. Uh, Keith is passing right now. They, his kidneys are shutting down. They asked him if he wanted dialysis. He doesn't. He wants to go see Veda and Jesus. And so he's uh, right in that place of passing. So just keep Keith in your prayers and as well as the, the family, if you would. Thank you. Amen.